Good day, everyone. Today, I'm going to be going over the income statement. I'm going to be giving a basic introduction to what is an income statement, how to format it, and basically everything you'll need to know about the income statement. As you can see, I have created a bit of a, an income statement template over here. This is a very typical income statement. Income statements may vary in exactly what they contain, but this is a, a typical format of one. So I'll tell you what's going to be the same every time and what might change. So your income statement is one of your financial year end documents. So an income statement is a document that your company will make when the year ends. And it's meant to summarize everything that happened in the entire year. It's one of several year end documents. For example, the balance sheet is another one. And the idea is that it's meant to summarize all of the goings on for your business in a concise way. So it's going to pretty much summarize all of your accounts into some digestible piece of information. And so the income statement and the balance sheet both have different goals on what they're trying to show. So these financial year end statements are very important for investors and for shareholders and for just being able to determine how your business did throughout the year. So you will notice in this income statement and also in the balance sheet, you will notice over here we've got some numbers like one and two. And over here, there's a lot more in the balance sheet, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And those are notes. So that amount, we end up, because it's a more complicated calculation than the rest, those amounts, they get their own little tables. And sometimes the tables are more complicated for different notes than other tables. But at the end of the day, after doing all these calculations, you get a final amount, and that's what goes in your income statement and in your balance sheet. So this is why it's such a good summary, because you can go look at these notes for a bit more of an in-depth breakdown, but just by glancing at your income statement, you get a good summary of what actually went on in the business. So let's start at the beginning. So your income statement is all about the money for this year. It's more of an idea of the money that was meant for the year than what money you actually got. So this is a little bit removed from your bank account. So it's not just what came into my bank account and what left my bank account. It's a bit more abstract than that. So your income statement is saying what incomes and what expenses were for this year. So that principle is what you use to guide everything you do here. So, for instance, if you are receiving a rent income, if you receive rent income for next year, then you don't include it in this table because it's for next year. So that rent income was only meant to be received next year. So even if you received it this year, that does not matter. What matters is, was it for this year or was it for next year? So whenever you're thinking, do I include this in my income statement or not? Do I include it or do I remove it from my income statement? That's the principle you have to think about. Is it for this year? Okay. So again, the real money is less important than that concept of is it for this year or is it not for this year okay so how your income statement starts starts with net sales up here so your sales minus cost of sales gives you gross profit so you've dealt that with that before and here sales minus cost of sales gives you gross profit so that's the first thing you do over here so what happens in your income statement, though, is that it's not just sales. It is net sales are your sales minus your debtor's allowance. Because your debtor's allowance, remember, it's what your debtors have given back to you. So it's stock that you've sold to them for credit, and then they returned it. So you remove that from your sales because you didn't really sell it this year. Although you did sell it, 
then they returned it, so you have to remove that. And that will give you net sales. Cost of sales, you know how to determine that. Um, and then that gives you your gross profit. So your gross profit is calculated by sales minus cost of sales. Then we deal with our other income, our other operating income. So this is everything else except for your main buying and selling of stock. So this is services. This is rent income, commission income, any income based off of a service, not based off of selling a product. So you total all of these up and put it over there in this green block. Obviously for you, the block isn't going to be green. It's all going to be the same color. The green is just to highlight. So as I wrote over here, so this is the principle that you work by. You take your base amount. So you're going to have to make adjustments to this. And this is where you have to keep in mind your principle. So take your base amount. Then you add whatever you were meant to receive. So you add, so if they were meant to pay you rent this year, but they didn't, you still include that. You add that because it's for this year. Even if the money didn't get put in your bank account, that doesn't matter. What matters is, was it for this year? So if you were meant to receive it this year, then you include it. And then you subtract whatever you were not meant to receive. And that applies for commission income, that applies for any income. So there could be more than just these two over here. That's just this example. So then adding those two together, you put that in the green block over here. Then you can calculate your gross operating income. So what that is, so you just calculated this gross profit, you add in your other incomes, and that gives you your gross operating income. All right. Now we talk about all of our other expenses. So expenses apart from cost of sales. So this is going to be all of your miscellaneous expenses. So like advertising or um, consumable stores or wages, salaries, whatever you paid, whatever expenses you had that aren't cost of sales, they will go over here. And again, for advertising, again, the principle is what did we owe for this year? What were we meant to pay? So we take our base amount, we add whatever we were meant to pay, and we subtract what we were not meant to pay. So if we paid them for next year, we subtract that. And if we didn't pay them, then we need to add that. So if we paid them last year, maybe, we were meant to pay it this year, so we include it here. So again, just that principle of for this year. Okay, so this is also where you can include trading stock deficit. So trading stock deficit is when your trading stock that you've actually got. So if you go and look in your storeroom and you tally up your trading stock, your deficit is if that amount is below what it should have been according to your books. So the deficit is whatever is missing. The deficit is between, it's that space between the real world value and the book value. So if you check and in the real world, you've got less than you expected, then you've got a deficit. And if in the real world, you've got more than you've expected, you've got a surplus and that'll go in other operating incomes instead. So advertising, trading stock deficit, consumable stores. So the principle with this is again, what did you, so over here is what did you use during the year? So you add what you had at the start. So your consumable stores left over from last time, you add whatever you bought during the year, and then you subtract whatever you've got left over. So how, how many consumable stores did you use during the year? It's what you had at the start plus what you bought, but then you subtract whatever you didn't end up actually using because you can use that next year. Okay, so wages, etc., all of that would also be included here, insurance, um, and then provision for bad debts adjustment is one more new thing. So when you've got bad debts, you've got a provision for bad debts. What's your provision for bad debts? 
your provision for bad debts is so many that you stow away in the assumption that, okay, some people are not going to pay their debts. Some people who owe us money are not going to end up paying that. And so you make a provision for bad debts, basically saying, okay, we expect this much of our debts is going to be bad. Sometimes as the new year comes around, you decide, okay, we expect next year there's going to be more bad debts, so we are increasing the amount or decreasing the amount. So how do you determine your provision for bad debts adjustment? You take your old provision minus your new provision. So you take whatever your old amount was, your old provision for bad debts, minus your new provision for bad debts. And if it's negative, if your answer to that question is negative, then it's going to be an expense. And if your answer to that question is positive, it's going to be an income. Okay, the final thing, so wages, so the rest of your expenses would be income. So when you're done, you total all of that up, and that goes over here at the red place. So over here, you can place these amounts. You don't need those brackets around it. But when you total it up, you need to put those brackets in to show that it is an expense. So then you take what we calculated before, our gross operating income, minus our other operating expenses. That will give you your operating profit or loss, depending on how well the business is doing. Hopefully it's a profit. Then there's the last two things you need to add. The last two things are interest income and interest expense. And those you determine elsewhere, you determine their exact amount elsewhere, but they have to be included on this table. So they are not included in your other operating incomes or other operating expenses because they're a bit different to everything else. Because you want to keep them a little bit separate because you want to know, is my business actually doing well or is it just investing cleverly and getting lots of income from all its money that is getting interest in the bank account? So you want to keep that a little bit separate so that it's a bit easier when you look at it to say, okay, most of my expenses are actually just me paying off my loans, or most of my expenses are everything else. So that's why they're kept separate. So you take your operating profit or loss, you add your interest income, and then you get profit or loss before interest expense. And then finally, you subtract your interest expense. And that gives you your net profit or loss. So your calculations throughout this whole thing have just been adding together the positive numbers, subtracting the negative numbers, and just going down from the top, adding the positives, subtracting the negatives, keeping your tally, and then at the end you'll have your net profit or loss. So that is the core of your income statement. So if you want to have a quick look at those notes, your in interest income and interest expense, those notes are going to be fairly simple. It's just your, so for interest income, you include all of your positive interests. So your interest on fixed deposits, your interest on overdue debtors. So all of your interest that's good for you, that goes in interest income. And then for your interest expense, similar, your interest on overdraft, your interest on long-term loan, it's all your interest that you've got to pay that you don't really want to. It's an expense for you. Okay. So. I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, in another video, I will go through the balance sheet and I'll go through the rest of the notes. So let me know if you're interested in that. If you have any questions for me or any requests for what else I should cover, then please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed the video, then like and subscribe, as I would really appreciate the support and it would encourage me to keep making these videos for you. If you want to contact me for private tutoring, then you can look in the description for a link to my website. But more than anything, thank you for being here. Remember, smarter than you think.